Let's talk with DJ Cappuccino. Just talk with DJ Cappuccino. Thank you for listening to Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. And if you're listening, please click on like or subscribe. We value your comments. We value your criticism because that's how the podcast will grow. Thank you again for viewing. Just talk with DJ Cappuccino. You carry a very strong surname. In some ways, um, <laughs> all I can think of is uh, <laughs> the Prime Minister of Gazankulu. How did the disability alter your lives, your life? How did it change everything now? Oh, a lot changed, a whole lot. I'm no longer that person that I was before, yeah. but it's not easy because there are places where there are stairs then I need help to go up the stairs. Nothing much. I worked there and there. I went to university. I didn't complete my degree, but I still wish mm. um, I can really, really go back and complete my degree. I was studying law um, at the University of Limpopo. You, you, you asked the question. Where's the money coming from? Capuchina, yeah. tell me, do you believe in witchcraft? You stay in Bendo? Yes. It's in a, a car? Very, yes. Unemployed? <laughs> ah, Capuchino, um, come on. Do, uh, come on. Uh, look at where, uh. <laughs> uh, Need to refresh and unwind? Come to Wild Things at Meropa Casino and Conference Center where you get to enjoy quad bags, swimming pools, water park, restaurants, kids' games, reptile park, camping, birds park, and many other activities. Just talk with DJ Cappuccino. Welcome to another episode of Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. Today I have a privilege of introducing Kensan Nsangwis, a remarkable individual whose journey has uh, been shaped by resilience, courage, and profound ability to adapt in the face of adversity. She brings a unique perspective to our conversation, having experienced a life-altering accident that resulted in her disability. Despite the challenges, she, Kensani, embodies strength and determination. And she graciously agreed to share her insights and experience with us. Welcome to Just Talk. <laughs> what a beautiful introduction. Thank <laughs> you, <laughs> DJ Capacino. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> you carry a very strong surname. In some ways, um, <laughs> all I can think of is uh, <laughs> the Prime Minister of Gazankulu. <laughs> are you related? Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 my, my, my production crew, please, you must... Uh, <laughs> Have some respect, because I'm writing an article right now, mm -hmm. co-writing an article with um, Dr. Bongani Chabalal. Oh, well, are, I know Dr. Bongani. Yeah, yeah. We are investigating the role, the economic role, especially economic development role played mm -hmm. by homelands. Oh, okay. And one of the homelands we are enjoying the history is the homeland. They are uh, uh, all of them. And mm -hmm. uh, yes. 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 Um, I think he has done a lot of very interesting things. How related are you with with him? Um, he, he Papa Pabon and mm. the grand and the father. You sure, my grandfather. Yeah. Na Papa Pabon, Papa Makwa. So oh. at the at the moment, my grandfather is the only one remaining. Okay. Yeah. Kusale Papa and say everyone is gone. Oh, so we na kasi kasi mikule Ah well. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. You can't suffer when um you 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 know. Your prime minister is a caller. It means the one side, yeah, yeah, Kongwa, which is where you grew up. Mm. They would pass by. But it's a maxwana, maxwana. Like it's a walking distance. Loko ya kaba ka 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 butimlungis. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I, I wish I I met such a remarkable man. Honestly, mm -hmm. uh, I wish uh, I lived in that time. Kumbi abar kona in this genia the podcast. Mm -hmm. It would have been nice to have somebody like him. It will have been nice, yeah. but at least God, you can always invite him. Um, yeah. um, he's got a very beautiful daughter, my favorite, Gaba Nababo, Dr. Nina Nzangwisi. She's also academic. Imagine being a medical doctor. She, she, a lawyer. I'm like, yeah, okay, fine, go. So those are very interesting people. Oh, wow. wow. Very interesting. Ha has it changed you or affected the way you do things, the fact that you are from the Nzangwisi family? Not necessarily. You couldn't be naughty. You couldn't say, do certain things because it would always come back. Mm. 
there were certain things that you just couldn't do. You, you wanted to be naughty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want to go cool as a teenager. You want to do things and <laughs> go to bashers, do that. But we couldn't do many things. We had to go to the and we had to go because mm. at the end of the day, you, would be, you wouldn't be known. I'm not known as Kinsan. But I was a shaman man. I was a shaman man. You know, so yeah. That's, that's that pressure right there. Mm. Please take us back uh, to that little girl. Mm hmm uh, growing up in Guangkoa, yes. I assume. Mm -hmm. um, take us there, like, how was it like, the family structure, what are your fondest memories? You know, I'm, I'm just giving you that blank check for you to write. <laughs> fondest memories. So I was growing up with, with my uncle, Sam. He was, he's actually a year older than me and my late sister, Amkelan. So the three of us were always up to mischief. It was very interesting. We'd ride bicycles in the dusty streets of Ngoangwa. But I think one thing, we shared a lot with other people. Mm. So sharing or giving to the community is not something that we started. We saw it from our grandparents. We saw it from our parents. You know, we always had a, that home where it was always filled with people. You had plenty because, I mean, you had a plenty. Yeah, minister. so people will come when they need bazaaries, when they need money, when they need food, clothes. People, mm. even now, look, no, even now, if I can call my grandmom, she'll be complaining. Hey, aku teban. Like, people are always just there. But you know? Yeah, money, yeah, kuna mani, kuna he, papa. He, 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 <laughs> yeah. How I wish. So how, how was the family setting? Who was uh, the head of the family? And, uh, you know, how did the person keep the family together? Um, my mom was young when she had me. She was 18, so she had to go back to varsity. So I call them ma, nina, papa, not granny. Okay. Uh, because to me, I feel like I'm their last born. So yeah. they, brought, they brought us up. Um, my dad passed. I was a year and five months old when my dad passed. So. Um, I'm told in this situation that I'm in today, I actually walk like he did just before he passed because he was, he, 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 but bay stroke. Mm. So his right side was no longer working when he passed. So I'm told. And also we, we, he passed in the same hospital where I found myself fighting for my life. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, has been one of those, uh, mm -hmm. uh, because you don't understand Okay. Oh, I okay. I even have an A in Zwan. Mm, okay. So um, it used to be called small Soweto. <laughs> and when the guys from Kwakwa come to Gyan, mm. would feel good man. Majital and Kwakwa feel. And I will prepare ourselves. <laughs> they can kind of outclass us, whether it's with cars, with girls, with mm -hmm. everything. How, but I know that it's a vibrant uh, township. It is. Also known for uh, especially soft crimes. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, is known it is yes. uh, uh, cut card. Cut card and so uh, on. Yes. At some point, there were mavoda mm -hmm. or something. We, it, it's also known for that. And I think it's still even breeding such mm -hmm. uh, criminals who are flourishing oh, yeah. outside of Nkwanko. Was, there, was it a crime ridden place when you grew up? I don't know. I've never, you know, funny enough, I've never experienced any crime. Mm. In in Goangoa. yes, in Bulukwane, you know they will you know snatch your phone when you're walking down in the streets. But in Goangoa, honestly, I've never experienced anything. No, uh, apparently, such. I've heard mm. that they are there, yeah. but I've never come across them or befriended any of them or come. I mean, like or maybe experience it myself. No, I've apparently, never. Apparently, cool, mm -hmm. um, they were not doing crimes to their own people. Oh, okay. But they were good. They were good. Yeah, in there. That's what I... But I've, I've, I've met very interesting uh, fellows because I used to go to Nkwankwa to play soccer almost every Sunday. Mm, okay. And I've met people... You know, there are mm. very guys who still intrigue me. Mm. Also from academic side. They mm -hmm. are very strong academics. Yes. From Nkwankwa. Mm -hmm. Like you can get everything that you want yes. in that place. Then um, your primary school, uh, secondary and high school... Uh, primary school, I went to Ngoangoa Primary School, mm. and then uh, I think it's five, then I stand at three, grade five now, ne? and then I went to Retabi, and then when we went to grade six, it was that time when, you know, these uh, private schools were being introduced, and then my grandfather said, nah, mm. me I Meridian, and then she, my grandmother, took us to Meridian College, and I was Tell me, where, where was Meridian? He was in Okay. Yeah, mm. I had that mm. And then high school, I went to Merenski. Um, I was in Marinsky until grade 11. Then I came to Bulukwane. I was at Western Bekai. Then I did my matric 
in Kwangula Tilo Education Center, Egyal. Kwangula Tilo, Kwangula Tilo. Yes. Okay. The A school in Egyal. Mm. Yes. Why, why such traveling? What was <laughs> No, when I had to do my matric, um, my mom was very sick. And I was staying with my mom. It was just the two of us at that time. I was the only child. And when I had to do my matric, it was said, no, it's better I go somewhere where I won't be able to see her. So at least I can focus and do my matric. So that's hey, why. No, <laughs> no, there was no license because the family that I was staying with was more than strict, more than my grandmother. Ne. Yeah, so. Okay. Yes. And, and th when was it when you did your matric? 2005. 2005? Yes. Okay, good. And what, what, what happened after? What's, what's interesting that happened after? Where did you go? Uh, nothing much. I worked there and there. I went to university. I didn't complete my degree, but I still wish mm. um, I can really, really go back and complete my degree. I was studying law um, mm. at the University of Limpopo. At the University of Limpopo? Yes. And you, you, you were there for how long? For two years. For two years? Yes. But I want to track the years. Which mm -hmm. year was it? 2006 Six and, seven. and seven. Yes. And you, you quit? Yes, I dropped out. What happened? I got sick. I was not feeling well. And most of the time, I think this sickness will only come when, will mostly come when I had to write my exams. So every oh, time I had to go to exams. Buy something, uh, so every time mm. I had to write my exams, I would fall sick. Um, yes, I had very understanding lecturers. I had very understanding. I mean, the, the director of the School of Law at that time was Prof. Lizualo, um, who was by, he's still my very good friend up until today. No, but and this, I think this, more than anything, he's the one who still wants me to, who still wants to see me get this degree more than anyone. Please explain this. <laughs> like, uh, wh how would you feel? Like, every time, I need the semester courses, right? Yes. you saying, Kuri, I'm not that you were not handling the pressure. No, this thing started in high school, from grade 10. Every time it was time for exams, I would fall very sick. Maybe you were not handling the pressure. But from high school, I was. Mm. From high school, I was. I was doing very then well. you never wrote at all. I would write exams. I remember one time I was writing, was it, um, um, I can't remember the course that I was writing on that day. And right then, in the middle of the exam, I just couldn't. But thank God, I remember it was Advocate Mabas who was like, you know, um, invigilating. So because he knew the history and he knew what was going on, I just called him. I'm like, you're Advocate. Mm. I cannot. I need to go back to my room. And that day, I cried so much. Because mm -hmm. when I go to the room, I'm like, God, why is this happening? What is happening? You know, I, if, if, I, if I can get an explanation of why do these things have to happen mostly when I have to write my exams, mm -hmm. maybe I would understand, but I still don't understand up until today. Like, was it physical? Yes, or, physical. or psychological? Physical. I would, would be in hospital, in and out, in and out, in and out of hospital. Hey, Prof. <laughs> I'd be in and out of hospital. Black people are creative, Mara. Very much. Then, uh, out of those like first year subjects, mm -hmm. how many did you pass? What happened? Um, mostly eighty percent I passed. Then you were doing like I did well. You know, most you of my even now. I remember just last year I met one of my lecturers. Somebody will think it's many years, you won't even remember it. But because I was that A student, mm. it's like in some ways, I'm like, oh, hi, hi, you know. So I, I was one of those students who was doing very well. It's unfortunate that I was going through a lot at that But time. if you passed your first year mm -hmm. uh, um, subject 80%, mm -hmm. that is a dream of like every guy who didn't even get sick mm. would be happy to yes, have such a thing. Very happy. What pushed you to say, I want to quit? You thought to, like you'll end up dying if you continue. What happens? It was too much for me. I just couldn't take it anymore because I, I questioned a lot of things. I questioned God. I questioned myself. I questioned a lot of things. As, but why do these things happen? I questioned a lot. Mm. And I never got the answers. Yeah. I, one thing that I do, and I do so well, mm -hmm. is to encourage people who are in their senior years, yes. older, mm -hmm. even those with stable careers, mm -hmm. to go back to school. Mm -hmm. I think we met at the right time, and I'm going to be on your neck. Thank you. To, to make sure that you go back to school. And, and then, you know, the nicest thing about studying, especially um, humanities, mm -hmm. and, and, and you make more sense of things when you are older. 
Yes. Your understanding of the law, like you'll find that right now you've been following maybe KCR, MK, and Jacob mm-hmm. Zuma and IEC. Yes. Already you, there are some things that... You understand. Unlike when you're coming fresh from matrix. Yes, that's very true. You, you, you won't believe how it's going to even become very easy. Mm. Um, I have a friend from Beggar's Dog, mm-hmm. a very close friend of mine. We did MBA together. Mm-hmm. We called Vizare Ligore. Uh, we are going to do MBA. I still mm-hmm. remember uh, we were afraid, God, who's going to sign first? What if I <laughs> sign and when I, you don't sign? Okay. And we ended up like wanting to register at the same time. Mm-hmm. This guy uh, did pharmacy, mm. studied pharmacy. Maybe you know him, Renon. Uh, Othello Mushwat. No, I don't know. Did pharmacy. Uh, after pharmacy, we did MBA together. Mm-hmm. He went to do master's for pharmacy. Okay. Then started LLB. Oh, yes. From scratch. And he started LLB in, he was approaching his 50s. Mm-hmm. In his late 40s. Oh, yes. And now I think it's his final year. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to get a cum laude. Definitely. Because he, he, he's he more focused. These yeah. things. But besides, yeah, now Uri, Lokwaya Tev, he mm. wanted to do law. Oh. Marbabona, the his marks. science subject, yes. mathematics, physics were very good. Mm-hmm. But Isaka Famas. Mm-hmm. But he's a, he's a natural. And then when we were doing MBA, uh, uh, doing law, mm. he would understand law better than right there. And he realized something that he had cases, legal cases as a medical practitioner. Mm-hmm. And when he gets a normal lawyer, mm. they couldn't even represent him fully because they don't understand other dynamics oh, yeah. in the medical field. Mm. He's doing well. And then I think he's doable. I mean, I wanted to do law but mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. studying it exam. So it's oh, yeah. Yeah. I think if you go there, you're mm-hmm. going to even, you're not going to struggle. No, de- I, will, I don't think so. Yeah. Next year, when you go back to class, you're going to make sense of things easily. Mm. Uh, and it's going to be part of your life. Yes. Class. Yes, yeah. definitely. And very interesting, you know, when you come from a family where everyone is learned mm. and you're the only one, you're like, oh, Lord, help me. Help me to get this degree it's, as well. It's, and it's never too late. What are you going Help to do, me. ne? Mm-hmm. You're going to register in silence? Yeah. Do it. As you yeah. go, auto motivate. You'll find that you have a different energy after a semester. Yeah, that's true. And and I think acquiring knowledge is one of the most exciting things. Exactly. Besides, you'll realize that, oh, now I'm making sense of what happened. Mm-hmm. Now I'm making sense of what happened. Yes. Then after you dropped out, as you put it, dropping mm-hmm. out, <laughs> uh, what did you do? Um, I, I was. I remember I went to Pastor Strike. He had um, a studio at Mana Village, mm. and then I would write for his magazine. Um, I was also part of the Mana. Some of the TV shows that he had at that time. That is way back though. Mm. And then I went to Sowetan some day, and I just knocked on their doors and I told them I want to write for you. They're like. Do you have anything? I'm like, Maria no, me. I don't have anything. I write poetry. At that time, only thing that I knew to write was poetry. I'm like, mm. but I want to write. And I remember that day, um, th- there was um, a politician in the building. And they said, okay, go and sit there. I remember the editor, um, Likuta or something. He said to me, go and sit there. I'm going to give you the computer. Uh, listen to the interview, report it, and then send it to me. Okay, I went and I said, and guess what? My story was actually the second story the following day in the newspaper. Wow. And I was like, okay, so I can do this. You know, this, I was thinking <laughs> about this thing yesterday because I was <laughs> attending um, an alumni convocation here, communications and media studies students at the University of Limpopo. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking well, one of the challenges here in the media students, mm-hmm. we compete with people without formal education yes. and they're kicking ass mm-hmm. because they knock on these doors they don't just sit they even remember you you ass. apply because you have papers mm. you want to apply and see the post and apply yeah i went to knock yeah i went there and i said this is what i want to do i don't have any qualification for it mm. i've never written for a newspaper before but i want to write and and that, that is actually natural talent you mm. realize got a radio space mm-hmm. uh, uh, Journalism, those who write, these people, most of them, don't even have uh, uh, half of the mm-hmm. qualifications we have. That's true. Or at all. But they are good at mm-hmm. that. And Ila maybe is to get into the field 
uh, uh, understand the craft, learn, recraft, adjust, readjust, and be better at it. Mm -hmm. In fact, the question of school yes. is something, uh, Skore. What is school? School is it that certificate, come basic, what you're learning. That's mm -hmm. why I'm interested in you going back to school. Mm -hmm. It's you acquiring that knowledge. Yes. Uh, uh, um, acquiring it and being able to apply it. Mm -hmm. Mara, we need to actually have a debate another day with <laughs> academia. Mm -hmm. And as I, I sometimes wrote, Kore, sometimes um, education can be crippling. Okay. We believe so much that that paper will save us and we stop thinking. Yo, yes. You understand? Mm -hmm. And you find that someone who doesn't have that paper realizes mm -hmm. that there's no paper waiting for him. They need to do the something. The person must just work. And yeah. those people, they end up making it Making it, yes. Okay, so now, so wait and tell me about it. Yeah, so I wrote a few articles, but I did not like job work. It was too fast for me. It was way too fast for me. Mm. So I came back home and then 2010, I fell pregnant. And I have, since then, I've been a full-time mother mm. to my son. You came back pregnant from Jersey? Or no, no. You came back to be pregnant <laughs> in Nibobo. I came back to be pregnant <laughs> in <Nibobo. laughs> So since then, I've been, you know, mm. yeah, a full-time mother to, okay. my, to my son. He's 13. Mm. Yes. And you... How do I ask this? <laughs> how do you take care of? Of him, I take care of my son very well. Mm. Uh, you, you, you ask the question. Where's the money coming from? Ah, uh, you, you ask. Is there still money? Can can we? No, I can't. No money, but yes, they do help a lot. Oh, trust we, we, fund we, we. people. I from know. From Denza, we see trust fund. <laughs> Presidential <laughs> association <laughs> fund of some sort. <laughs> okay, no, we're surviving. We're yeah. surviving very well. I'm yeah. not complaining at all. We're doing well. Good. I think now we are coming to uh, that point that mm -hmm. altered and changed your life. Yes. Tell me about it, the accident, what happened, where were you going, Kashkash? Sure. And you even had a car, Ungadir. Ungadir, not sure if I drove myself here, Ungadir. Um, Capuchino, yeah, no, tell me. Are, <laughs> some people are winning in this life thing. <laughs> Capuchino, yeah. tell me, do you believe in witchcraft? Uh, do, do you believe that it exists? I didn't until I started doing this show and we had traditional people who told me things that I didn't believe in. But I don't think I've experienced witchcraft. Maybe if they did bewitch me, I'm not even aware. Okay. I also don't believe in witchcraft. Mm. Um, but it was on the 2nd of February, 2018. I woke up that day. Um, I took my son and my little sister to school. So I came back to the house. Three days before my birthday. Yeah, it was a Friday, very hot day. So when I came back, I didn't pack them over. So I was in the house, but I was not feeling well emotionally, but I couldn't explain what was going on with me. I don't, nobody made me sad. I was not sad. I was just had that feeling uh, that the something. Baby daddy, the baby daddy made you sad. <laughs> the baby daddy has been, no, the baby daddy been... has been long gone. Oh, Capuchin. I'm so sorry about <laughs> it. Maybe we're missing here. No, had, no, yeah. no, definitely not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I just had this feeling, Jay, that something is not right, you know. Mm. Um, go to my room, I listen to some gospel music, but I did not that's, pray. That's in the morning? That's, yeah, during the day. Mm. Now I'm waiting for one o'clock to go and pick up the kids. One o'clock, so normally I'm that mother, ne, that when school comes out at one, I'll be there 30 minutes early. I'm that mother. I want them to find me waiting for them. I don't want my kids to wait and, and, and so on. That's they, why you were here... 30 minutes before the scheduled time. Yeah, that's why I and was you born. And had to wait for another three yeah, hours. No, and I had to wait for, shoot. that's me. I'm oh, very punctual. No, that, that's a good quality we I'm, I'm very punctual. Yeah. So, um, I, I, one o'clock comes, I can't leave the house. I don't know why. I'm supposed to leave. So I'm thinking, Ish, the kids are out. Okay, quarter past one, still, I don't have that no, you were energy. You know, I don't have this energy to leave. It's not witchcraft, you were tired. And then exactly half past one, I left the house. Um, like I said, it was very hot. Mm. Left the house, it was hot. I put on the aircon. Um, from the house to the school, it's, it's less than five minutes drive. It's just around the corner. Mm. So mm. as I was driving, um, I was going south. I saw, yo, it, I saw two lizards. That's in my, Yes, in yeah. one. In Bendon. Very small street in ben, Divet, Divet Drive. You stay in Bendon? Yes. It's With a very... 
Yes. Unemployed. <laughs> uh, come how do you do? Come uh, on. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> driving um on my right side mirror i saw two lizards they were like just parallel to each other so immediately i saw them after you pass i'm in that street where the school is just maybe 500 meters from the gate and i'm driving 40 because i'm about to indicate Adam, which school is it uh bet shalom christian school in bendo mm. i'm about to indicate to get into so i'm like about 500 meters away from the school and then i see two lizards on my side mirror and that was it. What do you mean? That was it. I was in the head on. I, I don't remember anything after that. Oh, I just remember waking up. You know, uh, somehow I woke up for, it for two minutes after that. And when I woke up, I realized there are a lot of people, paramedics. And, and in Bendo, there's no way you can even speed. You understand? You can't. Because remember, this is a, this is a street where there's a school. So you, you can't speed there. The two lizards. Two lizards. Then bang. And then I didn't feel the I didn't feel anything. I didn't even feel the impact. I didn't even see the impact. I just woke up, I don't know how after how long. I was still trapped in the car. What happened when you woke up? Um, I, I, I see there are a lot of people because I was feeling hot. Like I said, it was a very hot day. So I was complaining of the heat. And one of the paramedics came, he took a blanket or something and just put it on top of, 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 you know, of the car. Mm. And then one guy came and he asked me, do you have a phone? And I said to him, you know, if you can just go around, it probably fell because it was on the seat, on the passenger seat. So he went and he got the phone and he came back and I said, my password is so and so. Mm. The last two numbers that I dialed, call them. They will know what to do. And it was lights out and I woke up. I, I don't want to know what car was it but what is the make of the car i don't even know cars but it's a suzuki mm. a swift was it big not really big mm. Mm. Yeah. the two lizards yeah yeah so now what happened then you lose consciousness again i lose consciousness again mm. and by the time i wake up i was in icu they already transferred me from Pulugwane to dr george mukar Haranko. Mm. Please tell me everything that you can still remember. In ICU, I don't remember much. I mean, after the process and when yeah, you in woke ICU, up. I I don't remember much. Um, I just remember my aunt coming, who uh, 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 Prof Golele. Um, I think you know her. She was also once um, the acting vice chancellor, Professor Shalati Golele. Mm. So she came to ICU because they said I had um, an iota tear. That means that the main vein in the heart, it ruptured. So Did you hit the string? What happened? Yes, because they, they, they had to use, come and use, use the jaws of life to cut the car and take me out. Mm. Yeah, mm. and the next thing I was, I was transferred to George Mokari. I don't know for how long I was in ICU. Honestly, I don't remember. But I remember the doctors who saved my life. It's Prof. Jaoke. Um, he saved my life. He made that operation because this operation was supposed to be done in Bulugwane, but when Dr. Mongwe explains some months later, there's a man called Dr. Mongwe that I truly, truly hope Mungwe. is going to watch. Mongwe. 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 Nikani Mongwe. It's a, it's a Tsonga's name from Kwankwa. Yeah, Sorry. he's from Kazumer, I think. Kazumer. Yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's, a, like, he's a cardiology surgeon. Mm. That man saved my life. Mm. But on, come on, I'm here, yeah, I'm no. hearing <laughs> and, 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 and funny, funny enough, uh, funny enough, all the professors mm. who were heading all these operations, mm. that's on, a doctor, uh, uh, Prof. Golele. Adayo, you know, Adayo. Prof. Chauke, the cardiology surgeon, Prof. Mm. Golele in orthopedic. So all these doctors, what, what is left is for this country, by Nika Machangan, by Rana, man. 
what is that first <laughs> left? It's on the president. Yeah, we're no, done. We're done. Yeah. yeah, no, they really saved my life. Um, when I go to Harangwa, like I said, I don't remember much my stay in ICU. But the day I left ICU, they took me to Ward 15. It's called the orthopedic ward. Um, you, know, you know, when in ICU, you don't feel anything. I think, I don't remember feeling much in ICU. You don't even know how you I don't to. even know what's going on. I don't feel much. I'm not in pain. I don't feel anything. Mm. So um, all I remember is th there was a day where I felt, where I saw myself outside my body. You know, like stay, then I saw myself, I'm like outside the body. I don't know, maybe I died. I don't know. Honestly, I don't. Because I once asked... Um, uh, Prof. Chao get this question. After, way months after. I think it was a year after the accident. Imagine if you saw the two lizards in the <laughs> hospital. <laughs> imagine, imagine parallel. Parallel to each other, like right there. Mm. So yes, I did ask Prof. I'm like, Mara Shao, Melagumuno, ah, fat habukana. Does it happen? But mm. you know, when it comes to medicine, they 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 no, it doesn't. They can't explain it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It, it happened that I saw myself outside my body for some time. And yes, I got back. And then so the, but the, what I want to talk about is the day when I left ICU. Mm. I'm I'm half conscious, I'm I'm half sleeping, right? Mm. They take me to ward 15. Remember in ICU, they give you morphin, so you don't feel much pain. Now that morphin is worn out. I'm in an orthopedic ward. They're just giving you some general, you know, painkillers and so on. I'm in pain. And the morphine is addictive. They can keep, Yeah, keep they can keep yes. Yeah. So I'm in pain, like I'm in serious pain on that day. And as I was sleeping, it was in the evening, I saw eight men, they're like surrounding the bed. I can't see their faces, but I can see these are men because of their body structures. So I could only see from, from, from their waist going down. So mm. these are men, and these people were praying. Not praying to say, save her life. Those people were in the spirit. Those people were- They were saying, come join us. No, I don't know. But I felt, or how I interpreted it was to say, they were praying for me because I couldn't pray for myself at that moment. I don't know. Like, they were just this, they were like, it seems like all the shapes were just the same. But there were eight, because mm. I could count. Th these are eight men, and they were endlessly praying, you. surrounding my bed. So immediately my uncle came, because it was time for visit. So when Sam comes, Sam wakes me up, and then I'm like, hi, Sam. Then he wakes me up. I'm like, no, man. Can you see these people? I saw them, but now my uncle woke me up from, I don't know whether it was a dream or what. Mm. So when Sam wakes me up, I say to him, Sam, there were people here. Where are they? He's like, people? I'm like, yeah, there were eight men right now. He's like, no, I didn't see anyone. But that was the day that I knew that this accident was not meant to kill me. That's when I knew that I'm going to survive. And you also knew that there's powers beyond our imagination. There's something. Yeah, that's, there's, that there's I... something, Jay. You know, I used to joke with the nurses and the doctors. I'm like, man, guys, my father died in this hospital. He'll wake up and come and disturb your peace mm -hmm. if you don't take care of me. Because my father died in the very same hospital where I found myself fighting for my life many, 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 many years ago. Mm. 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 Uh, I, I want that moment. Ne? Mm -hmm. Take us to that moment where now the doctors have to explain what happened to you. Uh, in detail? You know, funny enough, no one came to tell me that from here you'll be living with a disability. Funny enough. No what, what is your disability? Um, my leg is not working. It's paralyzed. This leg is not working. How do you drive? Um, my car is modified. Mm. So I drive with my hands only. Like the whole leg is not working. No, this leg is not working. And also you, my... You, you just lifted it now. Yeah, but I, I can't feel anything. I can't feel anything on the leg. You can pinch me, you can do whatever. T till, like till where? Yeah, from, 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 from just under the knee going down. Mm. I can't move my toes. It's, it's not working. And also if you can look at my arm, um, it, I, I, I can't pick up heavy things anymore. Mm. because there's um, wires inside. Um, also my hip. So my injuries were actually the iota tear. The, the, that is the main the vein. The main vein from yes. the heart. And then this is a humerus fracture in medical terms. The arm is broken. Then I also had an acetabular. That is the hip. So you broke this bone. Yeah. And they had to join it. They had to join it. 
and support it with wires. Yes, support it with wires. So now my hip was also broken. It's called the acetabular. It was broken. Um, uh, they did the operation once. What did they put? They went twice, put in some wires. It didn't work. Mm. And then a year later, they had to do a total hip replacement. So they gave you another hip? So they have a, another hip. But from another person or they... I, I don't know. They, they 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 use they they know. Yeah, they scalp some stuff and. But they can move. It can move. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to know. No, it can move very well. So. Yeah. Um, my patella. This is the kneecap. I just go little easy biology, but. My no. You know when the doctors are talking, mm. I I listen. I'm a very good listener, so I listen and I learn. So, so the knee. So cap. this is the kneecap. Mm. They call it the patella. The kneecap was actually shattered in, into eight or nine pieces. I'm feeling pain without <laughs> being in the accident. Yeah, so yeah. they had to use K wires to put it back together. The very same one. The very same wires. The, the very same. Uh, uh, yeah, patella. patella. Yeah. That uh, yes, got They was, had to yes. bring it together. They had to put it back together using some K wires. The glue. I don't know. They put wires. They call them the K wires. Mm. Yeah, they had to use K wires. And then now, when my hip broke, there's what we call a sciatic nerve. So that nerve was pulled. Hence, it creates my foot not to work. And we call it a foot drop. So I have a foot drop. Like it's just hanging. Yeah, it's just hanging. That, well, what is the purpose of the shoe you're wearing? I walk better. Because remember, you see, I'm sitting. Can you see this one? It's bending, ne? Yeah. This one doesn't bend anymore. This is how far it goes. So it's no longer bending. This mm. is how far it goes. So they had to do MUA, called the manipulation under anesthesia, three times mm. to get it to at least bend like this because it was straight like this. Mm. Mm. And you know, it disturbs life. You go to, 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 to the cinema, how are you going to sit? You, you can't even. You understand. In a text. Yeah, you can't. No, I've never been in a public. Um, um, anyway, um, it has never been your thing. I mean, no, Cappuccino, not like that. public thing has never been your thing. No, not like that. It was my, I mean, come on. But mm. yeah, so it doesn't bend. And I can wear a shoe. Um, they gave me a thing called a splint. I can put it on. But remember, I can't. It's too far. So now I'm doing it too. So uh, um, a moon boot works much better for me. Because I wanted my to ask you before you went to the world, like, how did the disability alter your lives, your life? How did it change everything now? Oh, a lot changed. A whole lot. I'm no longer that person that I was before. Um, emotional, okay, but physical as well. I was a very active mother. Like I said, I love my son and I love being that parent, you know, who goes to the park, you know, who goes to his soccer matches. I still do, yeah. but it's not easy because there are places where there are stairs. Then I need help to go up the stairs. And I don't balance well. Sometimes I fall, you know, mm. because I feel like I don't have balance on my right side of the body. And so you, you can't go places alone. You, you, you just can't do much anymore. Um, when I read my RAF report, my orthopedic report, it said I've got 45% disability in my body. Yes. And that's a lot. It changes how you see life. It changes how you talk. Mm. It changes how you see people and view people. And how they see and view you. And how they see me. You know, I struggled a lot, DJ Cappuccino, with leaving the house after the accident because I was on a wheelchair for a very long time. You, 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 yeah, I, got, I wanted to get to the psychological impact, you know, as it, you are already mentioning it. You, how did you come out? Even to family and... You know, you know, one thing I wish our hospitals, especially because I was in a public hospital, one thing I wish they can really do for us is to give us some psychological help. Okay. They deal with what you're dealing with? Yeah, and they, they, they dealt with you. me. They operated 11 operations later. You, you go, go home. home. I did not even know I was disabled, Cappuccino. You know, when I left there, in my mind it was okay. Yes. I was sleeping on my back for three months. They did whatever they did, life went on. So when I left the hospital, in my mind I'm thinking, you know what, after a week or two when the pain stop, I'll just get off the bed and get moving. And when I get home, it was not like that. Like now, 
for me to turn on the bed, they had to turn me. I couldn't turn on my own. You know, you are, we, I'm a woman. You, you, you go on your periods. Now they, they have to Everything come and help changes. you, you know, change a pad, you know. Mm. You, you can't go to the kitchen anymore and make food because you, it's, it's, it's hard, oh. you know. A lot changed. You, you've got scars now everywhere. You go to the bathroom, like, I will always go to the bathroom. And before they'll put me in the bathroom, I'm like, no, can you just help me stand by the mirror? You know, and I will turn around and you see all these horrible scars and you go like, yo. Last year, I nearly lost the usage of my right hand because mm -hmm. of my shoulder injury from cycling. You don't know how much it affected me psychologically. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about just the hand. Mm -hmm. It Like, it messed me up. And when I went for an operation and they tell me that they'll be playing close to the nerves, mm -hmm. anything can go here where I must sign. Mm -hmm. Just signing that thing took me a few weeks to decide whether I'm doing it or not. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine you now. You are not even told you are 45% disabled. Yeah. They just said, we dealt with you, what, what, go home. Mm -hmm. So discovering all those things, and, and, and did you, do you believe that maybe you even at some point went through some depression or something? Did you... Be at that space where you thought maybe my life is not worth it. I think for two years, straight two years, I felt, go. Oh, why didn't God just take my life at the sea? I would have been better off. I can't live like this. Because I just couldn't. I couldn't accept it. And you know, funny enough, I'm one person who's always smiling. You know, when the doctors will come, the nurse, they're like, oh, you're always smiling. I'm that person. But deep inside, I was hurting. Deep inside, I was cursing my pain. Deep inside, I was cursing God. Deep inside, I was cursing everything around me to say, but why did it happen? So I woke up for a very long time. I stopped going to physio. Like you the, rebelled. Yeah, I'm like, no, what's the point? What am I going to do? Like, it's not going to get better. Why don't I just die? Why don't I just die? And for a very long time, you know, I will be in my room. They'll come and open the curtains. I'm like, no, don't. Like, just want to be in a dark space, be in the room by myself. And I remember one day, um, I woke up very happy that day. I was very happy. And I called my physiotherapist, um, Dr. Elizabeth. I'm like, dog, can I come in today? Do you have space for me? She's like, yes, no, definitely for you, yes. And I went. I was very happy. I don't know why, but I was happy that day. Woke up, went to physio. When I came back, it was a different story. It's as if that happiness was just a two-second thing, you know. Mm. I cried that day. I still don't know why. I don't know what triggered it. But, you know, with depression, mm. these emotions, they just come. You, you don't ask for them. I cried so much that day. I cried, Cappuccino. I, it's as, it was as if something was leaving my body the more I cried. You, like it's like you lost yourself. It's like something was just leaving, you know. I cried so much to a point where I had a bottle of whiskey. I used to use whiskey. That's why I don't like alcohol much. I used to use whiskey to numb the pain. When no one was watching, bottle of whiskey so I can sleep. Because I couldn't sleep. So I, I needed now? something strong. I, I, I felt that people had left. I, I, I was lonely when I couldn't even afford to be lonely. Like, and unfortunately, I was always smiling. I used Facebook for a very long time as my pill because I would go to Facebook, I would write whatever I'm writing about my accident. You, are you get 100 likes. You, are alone. you get 400 likes. I'm alone in my room at that time. I get 400 likes, you know. And you get a lot of inboxes from people that you know and that you only made friends through Facebook. And Half of them will be like, no, give us your number. We are praying for you. We are with you. We'll come and visit you. And Capuchino, none of those people ever came. None of those people who took my number ever called. The support so, from, from family? Do you also feel like... Even no, the family? the family was amazing. My family was amazing. My grandmother, because when I left um, the hospital, I told 
like I'm, I'm going to my grandmother because I felt when I'm with my grandmother, I heal better. She would bath me, she would. My grandfather was worse because every single day I'll come to my room and be like, Kenzie, I'm going to town, what do you want? Write a list. So I remember my late sister would write this long, long list and say, Papa, Kenzie, or Mung Shavel. And it wasn't even me. Like they spoiled me so much. My grandfather bought me my first pair of crutches. It was on my birthday in May 25. He bought me my first pair of crutches. My family was amazing. I'll never fault them anyway. They were there. They paid for my private physio. You know, I, I still pff, wish one day I can just have a one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Pope. Just to say, ma'am, can we please have more physios in Bulugwane? Because I, I would only go once a week. They'll only put, book me once a week. And that time, I needed some serious, serious physio. And they book you once in two weeks. And when you come there, it's like they must deal with you quickly so that yeah, they can because deal there's with a, Yeah, there's a queue. Like, I really wish, from my experience, I really wish that we can have more, more physios, you know, in, in public <laughs> hospitals. I wish we can have people that we can speak to. Yes, they're psychologists, but I was never offered one. I went to a psychology privately after I left the hospital because I was no longer coping. I remember my treatment, physio treatment. Mm. They would schedule it for one hour to one hour, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when there's a need, it will take about three hours. Mm. She would move, uh, try to move other appointments, check. And they, they schedule it in a way that the serious ones, not so serious. Yes. Serious ones, not so serious, so that they can be able to move. To move, yes. If there's a need. Can you imagine now you are in a public hospital? They just want to deal. Mm. It's just a routine and they mark. Yes. Then they just mark. I, I really wish. From my, I'm, I don't know about other people, but from my experience, I was only booked once in two weeks, mm. and I needed it. But I thank God for my grandmother because, you know, she would always give me money for physio. Because the first physio that came to see me, it was a house call. My grandmother made the call to this um, Dr. Bandeka, and then she came to the house, you know, and yeah, and my grandmother was the one paying for all my doctor's visits, you know. But so, so the support from home was actually amazing. So back to the day when I, I, I cried, I had a bottle of whiskey and I also had a mountain of some pain tablets. You were thinking otherwise then? So I decided, no man, this is not worth it. I cannot live like this. I do not wish my son to continue, my little sister to continue to see me like this. I'm a burden to my mom, I'm a burden to my grandparents, I'm a burden to everyone around me, you know. My uncle, my own uncle had to carry me naked and put me in the bathtub. And when you're done, he had to come and carry me and put me back. You know, it will take three people to take me to the toilet because one will carry my upper body, then, then another one will have to come with a, maybe a, a, a bucket or something and a pillow because this leg was extremely painful. And then they, then they will just, then I'll sit like this. When you're done, still you need people to, it wasn't easy. So that day I took those pain tablets. All of them? All of them. And I downed them with whiskey. But funny enough, ever since that incident, I've never questioned why me. Because my self-esteem was gone. Oh, you oh, stop. Oh, oh. Excuse me, um, like after taking pills, what happened? What? I was unconscious, I don't remember, but they called my cousin who quickly came, took me to a hospital, then they pumped out the pills. everything, yes, and then when you wake up in the morning, they're like, no, you are suicidal, we're too weak, we're gonna have to give you a psychologist. Mind you, they're offering me first time. So I said, no, I have my own private one, can you please call her? And she came to the hospital, she saw me, and I remember she said to me, can see this is exactly where I wanted you because every time you come to see me, you are this strong person. Oh, you are defensive. You like are this uh, strong person. No, it's all right. Like, you uh, deal yes, with it. Yes, I'll deal with it. You know, but deep down, I was falling apart. Deep down, my confidence is gone. I can't wear the same clothes I used to wear. Now I'm hiding my scars, always putting on, you know, I was always in leggings or a pair of tracksuit. You know, I was one, I remember the last picture, the, the, the last picture that I took, um, the, the last Sunday before the accident, I was wearing a very beautiful dress with high heels, mm -hmm. carrying a handbag. I can't carry a handbag because now I must be on my crutches. So we start going handbag. That's why I carry my, you know, mm. 
my cross body bags now. I couldn't wear clothes because I'm like, yo, everyone is looking at my leg. And then you meet people back with Anash go, no? You know? And it's some like, some unnecessarily they want to give you that some sympathy that it reminds you that takes you back. I don't want sympathy. You know, funny enough. That's why I let you stand up alone there. I was like, yeah, hey, you know, stand funny up. enough, when I was in the campus, you know, God works in mysterious ways, in ways that we'll never understand. When I was in the campus doing my law degree that time, I stayed in a race with people living or with, with, with people with disabilities. I stayed there. I would help them. They were my friends. I never saw anything wrong with them. And I would be judged. Other people would meet me like, why are you always with those people? I'm like, which people? Mm. You know, I would help them when they go shopping. I would go with them. I would help them. I didn't know that maybe God was preparing me for such a moment. That's why today, when it happened, they... I mean, if anything can go, happen to me right now, if I can go shopping and somebody mistreats me or make me feel so small or unkind to me, when I get home, yo, I'll call Notemba. Yo, my darling, this person said this and she'll always encourage me. Mm. Duki, she was like, Kensan, use your disability. Don't stand down. Use it. Fight with it. Don't just sit and say, okay, I'm disabled and life is over. No, it's not. How did you overcome uh, after attempting to take your life like when did you say like reach a point would like no but now i'm mm. fine now now i can take on the way now i can come to just talk to DJ Kapajib. <laughs> now i can go to church and speak now i can do this and that when did you realize that no man i'm taking my life back with whatever situation i'm going on um it was the day my mom bought me a car. Two hey, years later. There you go again. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Just get a car. Ah. No, it was the day they bought no, me a car. What, what kind of families are we from? <laughs> so when they bought me a car, Cappuccino, there's a car in the garage that I was so afraid. That's why I said... There's another car in the garage and they bought you another no, one? No, no, no. I'm saying it was there in the garage because I was afraid to drive it for months. So now I look at this car every single day. That's why I said you must never, ever curse your pain. Because when you are in pain, you say things like, I will never, ever, never curse your pain. I cursed my pain. I said, I will never, ever drive a car. Uh, umpo no umpo lai. Na, koloi, never. And the car stood there in the garage. And for the year. car is standing there now, you know. The car we need. It's and just sometimes parking. my son, you know, trans, you know transports. Because now my son had to learn transport since I was injured. And the car is packing. Sometimes the, 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 the transport is not coming on time and I'm worried, look, oh my kids. With permits. Ababu, yeah, you know, you call the transport. Ah. But there's a car there, you know? So I thought, let me drive. And, and that's when you realize that sometimes we don't count our blessings enough. No, we don't. Uh, I'll give an example. You had a car with permits parking, DJ. We, we don't count our blessings. Capacino, not funny enough, ne? To see the sun for the first time in three months was the happiest day of my life. The sun, you guys, you, people who are walking or people who even see the sun we every single day. We, we even don't want I, the sun. I was happy. You know, I remember, I remember I was in ICU, now I'm in orthopedic. So one time I went for an operation. So they need to now will me to x-ray because now they, they said I was getting better. So the x-ray was no longer coming to me now. So I had to... Go. go there. So they are wheeling me on the bed. I'm flat on that time. Pella was flat for three months. For yeah, for eight weeks, I was flat. I couldn't. Is the hips is yeah the because part. of the yeah. So I couldn't. So now they are wheeling me out of what fifteen. We are going to um, X-ray. You know, I felt like I could just tell Papa, no, Papa, wait. Can you just wait a little bit? I just want to feeling the sun on my skin was amazing. That's when I knew that we take life for granted. Mm. When you have legs. You don't see the importance. I, I I loved my legs. If there was one thing that I loved and I adored about my body was my legs. They look good. Uh, not anymore. I know it's not my place to say that. <laughs> yeah, but I loved my legs. I would want to show off my legs. I would wear you and I loved my legs. You know, I would shave my legs. I loved more than anything on my body. I loved my legs. Mm. But life happened. And for a very long time I had to 
cover myself up. I couldn't even go in public anymore. I felt, yo, everyone is looking at me. I, I still get those, you know, those days. Mm -hmm. And some have even seen you like this in a long time. You know, and funny enough, the total and I'm um, beyond my crutches now. They're like, ah, what is that? No, I was all a plus much. Guys, do you understand the extent of my injuries? Oh, more cut. I go, you know, that's not sure. Mm. And then you meet people who just don't like you. I'm like, hey, she gone all this year. I'm like, guys, there, there, you know, there's a stronger saying that says, "Ubula mu no she gone o arinze nika kuira manawe." In other words, only call somebody a, a cripple while you're still in your mother's womb, because once you're out of there, life can happen. So never ever think it will never happen to you. Eish. In life, never ever laugh at somebody else. Never ever think it, anything can happen, Capuchin. We can be up there today, but here tomorrow. I was walking, but today I can't even run. Mm. I can't even walk fast, you know. And th those things change your life. I, it, it changes your life. I've, I, I, it hasn't been measured how many percent. I know that this is not, this is a very weekend now. Mm. I can't lift things. I can't. Yes. What what? And that accident that I saw, showed you, my back. Mm. I know that uh, I can't keep her. Mm. It's, it's, it changes you. It changes you. But I can imagine you now, mm. the the way you've described uh, what you went through, how it has done. But I think that's when now the mind power comes in. Mm. Uh, I used to watch uh, on YouTube. There's this guy without legs and, and, and arms. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know him. Yes. He's a motivational, yes, he's a motivational speaker. speaker. Booked yes. throughout the world and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, he's changing lives. He's also making millions from it. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, and you can see, worry, if you lose a battle up here, yes. Pila Pila, in fact, disability, I know that, fine, disability is there physically, mm -hmm. but I think the worst one is the one that hits the mind. Yes. Where you are it's like, true. I can't do it. It's very true. You know, the first time I walked on crutches, mm. I was in Zeni. So I, I called my uncle. It like, was a big thing. Yeah, I'm like, Sam. He's like, okay, what? I'm like, no, Sam. Hey, you know, Papa, ne? he, he keep crutches in his room. Because my grandfather is also, sometimes he used to need them. Mm. So I'm like, you know what? Papa has crutches in the room. Papa did there, got the crutch later. And he went and he got the crutches and, and he came. And I said, you know what? We're going to walk. Hey. <laughs> so when he gave me the crutches, just to walk from my room up the passage, we pass the kitchen, we go outside. Yo, it felt like I've walked, I don't know, maybe a Comrade thousand kilos. You know, it felt like, guy, I've walked. I cried when I got outside, when I sat on the chair. I'm like, Lord, I thank you. Because it could have been worse. I keep on reminding myself that it could have been worse. It could have been worse. I have a friend I told you about, Sabelo, that I love so much. He has no family to back him up. He's no, he was only 13 when he was trying to make a living because parents died. Mm. You know, he was trying to go to the farms to try and get a job at Nobody the age of 13. Nobody bought him a car. No. Nobody bought him a car. Nobody. Like, he has no one. He has no one. He has no family, and he's paralyzed from the waist down. A hand is not, the one hand is not there. The one which is there, it hardly works. So imagine being 100%. I remember the other day, the helper left early. He was left with no one. It's like, Kenzan, my stomach is waking, and I'm just here. I'm sitting. I... There's nothing he can do until somebody come and help. It could have been worse. You know, as, as we are speaking, I'm thinking that as able bodies, we have an opportunity sometimes to help. Mm -hmm. And not only with man. Yes. And sometimes not even with physical effort mm -hmm. uh, to listen. Your I, kindness. I feel like we don't do. Yes. There's a lot we can do. And each and every one of us knows someone mm -hmm. with disability. Mm -hmm. Some way. Yes. And you don't know that sometimes... All we need is a friend. I think that is going to change my life. Going to 
all we need is a friend yeah. and and yes, this this is this is more complicated than we think it is yeah. but now that you motivate you you you're going to start blogging mm-hmm. in the next three four weeks you'll be starting your blog okay putting you on the line I'm putting you on the block <laughs> Yes, we're blogging. I'm, I'm doing mm. it. Okay? Now that your voice will be more, your views. I mean, we need to hear your views on TikTok, on on Instagram. Yes, definitely. You need to tell us how your day is. Definitely. Uh, we need to hear you saying, "Today I'm having a bad day." Okay. Today, it has dawned to me that I can no longer do the things that I mm. used to do. It has affected me this way. Mm-hmm. But I'm going on. I'm going on. We need because somebody needs to hear such things. Yes. Because remember, uh, we can go through stuff mm. while able bodied, mm-hmm. where we don't want anything. I know that me to rebuild, sometimes I stay indoors for three or four days. Oh, okay. Can you imagine a person who can walk, jump, yes. do everything, and do everything? Mm-hmm. And can you imagine a person who can't even do that? Mm. How it feels like. But we need. I feel, I don't know, I'm just thinking out of my mind that yes. we need to hear the stories, the happy moment, the sad moment. We need to hear interactions. Mm-hmm. Also, I feel like there's still families mm-hmm. hiding. There's a lot. People with disabilities. Yes, that's true. There's still also people also in closed curtains mm. who don't know how they're going to overcome and see the light again. Yes, that's true. Uh, uh, maybe uh, as, a, as a prophet who's not ordained yet, <laughs> I, I would love to see someone like you playing yes. in there because you were such a, you can project yourself, you want to speak. Mm-hmm. I, I see you speaking and I think you do it so well. Thank and you. I think you need to do it more. Share those moments a lot with us. Thank you, I'll definitely don't, do that. Don't hold back. I'll definitely do yeah. that. Share those moments, you're going to change a lot of lives and you're mm-hmm. going to participate. And, and, and But also tell us, what is it that you feel like you would love to do from now on? You know, what would that like I... I would definitely love to write a book. Mm-hmm. I would definitely love to share my journey because there's a lot to write about this journey. Mm-hmm. Um, I think also I told you that one day I just want to be on TV mm-hmm. because I feel there's a lot of, just to interview people with, disab- you know, with disabilities. I've learned that disability, it's, 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 most people are struggling because we were not born with it mm-hmm. more, more than ever. Right, and and there are those who are diabetic. I'm sorry they to come back. Come short. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to kill the the TV thing. Oh, okay, a podcast. Not necessarily. Okay, we we are living in a digital world. Yes, I don't know when was the last time someone watched TV in this room. Mm, mm. I don't know. I it's been too live. long. I, no, I also don't watch TV. I'm thinking I don't even need the, if if it wasn't <laughs> the fact that I'm staying with other people. Mm. I don't need DSTV. Yes, that's true. I, I also don't Another. have DSTV. All I need is that. Kushokuta was going to only pay for my DSTV once I'm on TV. So my I point is that have, yeah. uh, you're saying you, need, you now want a platform. Yes. And I think you need digital platforms. Mm. Um, a small video with your phone, mm-hmm. having a conversation with your friend. Yes. 30 minutes, 5 minutes, mm. you can touch people's lives. Yes. So we're saying before those big platform comes, mm-hmm. uh, uh, we need to start using what you have now. What I have, yes. That, that's how now things work in a digital world. Mm. Before you can have a beautiful studio like this one. Mm-hmm. We start somewhere. You need to go there. Please fill in those spaces. Yeah. Don't play and don't hold back. And then give us those. Give us that 30 second clip. Mm. It's going to touch and send the right direction. So I want to kill the TV thing and yes. screens in your life. Yes. No. And a person who can just get a car and pack it for so long. <laughs> I think, you know, even that latest phone can come. That, uh, I don't know what is it that they use or the, yes, or the camera, the phone. I think you can get those things. Also from even people around you. Mm-hmm. I want you now to look at yourself as a figure that is needed. And then your media space now is the digital world. And it starts mm-hmm. with your phone. Yes, definitely. And, and that way, because it's so inspiring how you are explaining how you got out of mm. things. Mm. But I think many people think that you don't have your bad days. Mm-hmm. And which I still believe you do. I have many bad days. Yeah. I have a lot. Mm. You know, there's a book that I read in, in 2013. 
I think that book was, yeah, it was actually launched in 2013 by the late Zoleka Mandela. Mm. It's called When Hope Whispers. Mm. You know, I read that book, I would put it down, I would cry, then I'll pick it up, I'll continue reading, I'll put it down, I'll pray for her, you know, I would laugh. It was such a beautiful book to read. Yeah. But when I was in this situation, that's when that book meant everything to me. That's when that book became my, my source of inspiration. Yeah. I'm like, if a whole Mandela can go all through these things, you know, the sexual abuse, mm. the, 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 the cancer that eventually killed everything that she's been through, then who am I? In other words, pain can happen to anyone. Thanks. It doesn't choose where you come from. It doesn't choose whether you have money. It doesn't, it, it doesn't choose and it doesn't care. Pain can happen to any person as long as still under this under the sun. I think I interrupted you also. Is the book, the TV, which mm -hmm. we now know that the TV, <laughs> the TV is, is now in your, on our hands now. This is our TV now. I don't know what's the next thing also you would love to, to do. Do you see yourself also speaking, uh, uh, you know, being invited to speak, to motivate awareness? More than anything. Mm. Yeah, more than anything. Um, you know, there's a, there's a man that I, I admire, um, Julius Malem. Mm. I admire him so much, not for his political games, but, um, you know, when he was in the ANC, I don't know what happened because I'm not a political person, yeah. but things happened, mm. and that saw him going down. <laughs> but he fought, and look where he is today. So I would say they buried him and yeah, they buried him alive. Yeah. But look where he is today. And I, there were times when I would sit in my room. I'm like, Kenzan, what would Julius do if he was in your situation? I don't even want to say much because we are Julius Maleva lovers here. You know. But I'm gonna listen so to you. So would he sit and say, I am living with a disability. I'm disabled now. He's uh, gone. Now I let me just stay indoors. But no, I knew he would fight. And that thing also gave me that fighting spirit wow. to say you have, you know, being on the wheelchair was the hardest thing for me. And I had to fight and I fought with everything. You know, I would go to war with my mind every morning. Hmm. I would go to war with my body. I would go to war with even my soul. Because there were days when you just don't want to wake up, you are in pain. The pain is ex so excruciating. You are in and out of hospitals. The nurses know you. The whole of Ward 15, if you can go there today, Miku Kensanin Zangwisi from Limpop, everyone knows me. Mm. They, they were the, you know, like, big ups to Dr. George Mukar, Ward 15. From the, like, from, from, from the cleaners to the porters, doctors, nurses, they were amazing on my journey. They were amazing. I've never seen such love. I found a home, you know? We, we always have this thing, of public hospitals are the worst. You know, they don't, I don't know. I, I did not go through it. I did I, I, I sent it. something on, on Facebook. I visited someone at the Polokwane Provincial Hospital mm -hmm. uh, two, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. It's also one of our members, Sapai of a Biking Club. Mm. And I wrote something that, but in all honesty, our public institutions are trying. They are trying. Uh, I, I looked at how clean mm -hmm. it is, mm -hmm. how organized things are for them. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes also a patient understanding what is going through. Mm -hmm. There's a file that is detailed. Yes. That shows a person understands. Mm. And I'm like, we're fine. We can fight and everything. But there's something happening in our public institutions that amazing. is not even documented well. They are doing amazing. I was telling you earlier about Dr. Mongwe, Nikani Mongwe. Mm. Remember that man only saw me for some few hours in Bulogwan and he transferred me. He took to a decision. Harangua. He took a decision. Mm. And months later, this man remembers, no man, there's an Tsangwisi man. And he thought I died. And if he didn't take that decision. And if he didn't take that decision, because he, after the accident, you know, he, he came to see me. Mm. I don't know this man, but he saw me once and he transferred me. Then once later, he looked for me and he found me through my cousin, Dr. Nzangwis. Mm. When he found me, he came to see me after I was discharged from Harangwa back to, to Tungawangawa. Mm. He came all the way, drove, 
So I'm going to see this girl. How my Tori, he calls me my Tori mm. And he said, could you have sneezed mm. at those hours? Oh, like yeah. the, the, the vein. Could you have coughed? It was over with you. You lie. It was over with your life. Imagine being told you cough, you die. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, could you have coughed? I'll be dead today. You could you have sneezed, Kensani? I've, and he said in his line of, since he was a doctor, in, I mean, he's a cardiologist, he's like, I've never seen anything with your case because with an iota tear, normally a patient does not survive for over 24 hours with that injury. You beat 48 hours. He's like, you know, when I transferred you, I looked for a chopper from Bulukwan. There was no chopper to fly me because it was an emergency. He had to now sign. He said when he was transferring, it was like he was signing to but say, no, what, like, ah, she ah, died. She's not going mm. to not gonna make it. Because he was afraid that those bumps you know, on the road, they were going to kill me. But God, I got to Harangua. I don't know what happened there, but yeah, they did the operation and I survived. And yes, I remember I there's, he said... There's a, there's a lot that... Yeah, he said to my parents, he's like, no, don't call a Kenzani anymore. Call him mm. a Shoria Yehovah because as a doctor, I've never seen anything like this. That's why I'm saying we still have so many special doctors, you know. I, I always dream of one day seeing him getting an award for being the best doctor. You know, you know, because he deserves it. Next year we're going to have an interview with you mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. and I have a feeling that you will be reporting very beautiful things. Definitely. Uh, uh, from today, mm -hmm. I think I hope that this becomes one of those platforms that fuels you. Mm. Uh, you have something, lady, mm. and and that thing is unique, mm -hmm. and it's given to you. Bestowed on your shoulders. Thank you. Go there uh, and cause shit. Thank you. Yeah, cause shit. I don't know how to put it. That's my advice. I'm going there to cause shit. Whatever it means. Go there and, and <laughs> don't hold back. Uh -huh. Don't be afraid of anything. Yes. Go and speak your mind. Go mm -hmm. and change lives. Mm -hmm. That one. Mm -hmm. Parting short of this, if there's any final thing that you want to say to the viewers of Just Talk, because I think you're going to fre frequent this place. Mm hmm uh, if there's anything you can look at that camera and tell the just talk <laughs> uh, viewers anything that comes to your mind now never ever think it can never happen to you life has a way of just happening distracting everything that happens so never ever think it cannot happen don't laugh at people um, when they're going through bad moments bad things embrace people love people forgive people don't ever think it can never happen to you. Says, just talk. My dream still is to, uh, it's my birthday, guys, this month, in two weeks' time. So my dream is to still meet Julia Smalim. I wanted to meet Uzolega. We had moments where we talked. Unfortunately, she passed before we could meet. Mm -hmm. So I will still love to meet the CIC, just to thank him for giving me that fighting spirit, for inspiring me to have it in me as well. I don't the think I have the spirit. power to do that, Mara. I feel like uh, Julius Malema will make you. I can. feel like from this, <laughs> I am, some power will come. Because no, I you think have he, that power. You sincerely <laughs> want to meet that person. No, I, I do. Uh, and, and I don't know him much, but mm. I th he's one person, the few little moments I've, I, I met him, mm -hmm. is just inspiration. Yeah, I would about, love to meet and, him. Maybe and, uh, on my uh, birthday. Plus, he'll be there at Pitamuka. Maybe on my birthday. Yeah. And, and, and also, I say that uh, uh, CIC, I don't have power uh, <laughs> to summon you or anything. <laughs> Here's a lady who just wants to meet you. Uh, uh, it will be nice. Uh, at Tela Tuparali. Go meet. <laughs> no, definitely. I would, love, <laughs> I would love to meet him. Like, he gave me that fighting spirit. Yeah. I fought. I still fight. Oh, like you said, I must do a blog, vlog. Mm. All those things, I'll do it because no, I, I still find God and my sister just told me that Judas Malim is going to beat you. Ah, yeah, I can't uh, wait. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you for <laughs> listening to Just Talk with DJ Capacino. Thanks to the production team, my water power production. Thanks, Styles and States, <laughs> young guys, the future of digital production. Mm -hmm. uh, very talented guys. And thanks to you, Kensani Zangwis, uh, for coming and for reaching out to us. You know, yeah. we would like to think that we are a fairly new podcast. Mm -hmm. And I think you are amazing. An amazing person like you who's about to change the world yeah. came and spent time with us. And thank you so much it's for really the opportunity. Thank, thank you. I didn't think you would even respond. You know, when I sent that message, 
No, yeah, I woke up you know, there are these busy people. No. And I'm thinking, ah, he's not going to respond. You'll be shocked how Judas but Malema is going to and respond. And in just 30 seconds, you, I mean, 30 minutes, you responded. I'm like, yay, this is good. Yeah. No, thank you so much for the opportunity. No, I, good. I, I truly Immediately, I forwarded it. to production team, and we, we're working with a level-headed person. Mm-hmm. Uh, Prof, I call him Prof Mabot because mm-hmm. after you become a doctor, we expect you to be a prof. A prof, definitely. So he, he looked at <laughs> it and said, we need to have. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to even talk about someone uh, known who we cancelled for this. Oh, okay. Because it won't be fair, but yes. uh, we are happy that you came. No, you thank you so best. much. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, just talk with DJ Cappuccino. Yeah. Just talk with DJ Cappuccino.